2,500 to 3,000 degree maximum cylinder temperatures is typically what you will see in modern racing engines. So uh, we basically just need to select a material then that is good for 3,000 degrees. And yeah, problem solved. Engine will run fine and no issues. So thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please uh, like and subscribe. <laughs> okay, so let's get on to the uh, real stuff here because you might want an engine that is not super expensive and super heavy. So we might want to make it out of a material that is not good for 3000 degrees. And how are we going to do that? Uh, I'm Oscar from Home Racing and uh, yeah, let's go through this quickly. This is the quick, quick version. <laughs> because yeah, I tried to do this and that was really slow. So now we're going to do this really, really quickly. Um, so there are, first of all, uh, three types of heat conduction I want to talk about. Let's do first some basic sort of conductive heat. So if we have a hot surface, hot end here, and we have a cool end over here, then we basically get some kind of a temperature delta over this. So we have a high temperature here on this end and a low temperature over here. And this can be solid, gas, liquid, whatever, as long as there is no, no sort of movement or mixing inside this this section then this is how it's going to work and you can look up the heat conductive heat conductivity uh, coefficients for different materials in in yeah any kind of textbooks or on the internet uh, wikipedia probably has lots of those also and all that good stuff very easy to calculate um then uh how do we okay let's go back with this and then there's another type of heat transfer if we want to transfer like a heat amount like further distances or stuff like that uh, we can have some we have like uh let's say we have a hot ball bearing here then we can basically just grab this ball bearing and then we transfer it over here and then we have the hot ball bearing is suddenly over here nice so then we don't have any kind of heat conductivity things or anything like that at all. This is just a question of what kind of uh, heat capacity this ball has and how fast we're transferring. It is basically our effective heat transfer coefficient now. So basically completely overriding uh, the sort of heat conductivity or the uh, limits of, of traditional heat conductivity. Uh, then we can also kind of use heat sort of locally at least. Uh, so we have a really hot surface here, or like a, let's say this is some kind of a box here, really, really hot. And we put some water on top here, uh, just a water blob here. And you will know if you boil water or something like that, then the liquid turns into a vapor, which is really, really big compared to the uh, liquid. So we're expands like 500 times or something like that, and it absorbs a lot of, of heat also. And then we suddenly have a huge volume here of, of a vapor instead of liquid. But it absorbs a huge amount of heat also. Uh, really, really uh, much, uh, a huge amount compared to what the sort of uh, heat capacity is just like raising the temperature of the liquid. And yeah, these are the basic sort of three different types of heat conduction that are available. So let's um, do the short version and look at what this means for actual engine. So we are doing this. So we have some kind of combustion gases. So let's take an example, for instance, in a combustion chamber. So we have lots of really turbulent uh, hot combustion gases here, which is uh, itchy. Um, so yeah, we have lots of mixing here. So this is like a, a heat sort of transfer mixing thing. So we have really, really high effective heat, heat conductivity which basically means that this whole gas more or less is the same temperature. Let's say it's 2,500 degrees, but then we have a, we have a cylinder wall right here, which needs to be at a lower temperature. Where did my go there? Let's say we need to keep this at 300 degrees. Well, you can maybe get away with 350 or in some cases 250 might be pushing it something like that anyway and then we have another surface here where we will where we'll be 
uh, transferring the heat out of here because otherwise it's just going to end up at the 2500 degrees eventually of course combustion isn't continuous but yeah anyway uh, so let's say we have 130 degrees maybe depending on some some places might be 200 some might be 80 depending completely on the situation and then this is a solid material so this is my solid material drawing and then we of course have some cooling over here we have some cooling flow and some liquid and yeah this has some temperature again let's draw that in here so let's say 72 if we're really pushing it on some endurance racing thing where aerodynamics is super important then yeah i might might run sort of high pressure cooling systems and maybe 150 degrees there something like that maybe okay but then we have temperature gradients here of course and this is where the uh, heat conductivity comes comes into play here because uh, gas and liquid are viscous uh, as long as they're not super cooled and and like uh, in in the sort of uh, a su super super liquid state whatever that's called <laughs> but yeah <laughs> that's not what's happening in in the conditions that we're talking about so we don't need to care about that so we have a viscosity which basically means that the that the gas particles here really close to the surface don't really move around and they're clinging on to the next particles and then you sort of get more and more sort of backwards and forwards flow and more and more mixing sort of the further out you go uh, from the cylinder wall and it might be something i'm just completely like pulling this out of my ass but probably something like between one and five millimeters maybe of of effective sort of um, uh, area here where or like a, a boundary layer where we don't have this really effective mixing but we have conductivity instead so that basically basically ends up it means we end up with something like this so we have a high temperature here then uh, let's not use that color then the temperature sort of drops off when we get closer to the surface and then we have sort of a lower surface temperature here and then we have a surf temperature gradient over this aluminum of course also let's do a temperature gradient like that this is basically linear uh, this is not linear because we have a much much more uh, conductivity out here than what we have close to the surface so it's supposed to be like curved i guess wait or is it curved the other way well <laughs> something like that anyway and then we have some uh gradient here so we have some kind of coolant here and then it's cooler out here where we have a sort of free free stream temperature somewhere over here so we have a boundary condition over here also and this is of course not ideal at all because this is because this boundary layer here is is hurting us really because we want to run this cooler so that this surface will be cooler so that uh, we can uh, get more advantage out of this boundary layer here which which will yeah allow our our actual structure piece to be cooler but yeah uh, this is how it works in a nutshell but if if this doesn't really work very well so if we for instance have uh wait let's not delete that but we need to do like a crunk so if if this for instance gets blocked for some reason then that basically means we don't have a temperature gradient here anymore this surface will just keep heating up and if this temperature here is above the uh, boiling uh, temperature at the pressure that we have in the cooling system here we'll start vaporizing here so then we have the vaporization effect that we talked about earlier so we have these water droplets or molecules or whatever that are that get into contact with the surface here start expanding out and this expansion here will start taking up a lot of volume and this will start blocking other uh, water particles from getting in here especially if we don't have a, a good mass flow here then we don't have sort of any any sort of active mixing of of this and we will end up with uh, big sort of uh, vaporization problems problems here blocking the cooling flow and then that basically means that we almost have we end up with a really really low temperature gradient here which means this temperature goes up which means this temperature goes up and when this temperature gets too high we basically have structural failures of the engine so for instance in which is a real really well documented case that you can find lots of actual good data on for instance from a world war ii uh, uh, fighter piston engines and probably bomber piston engines also we're trying to uh, cool the exhaust valve seats for instance as much as possible and all kinds of innovative solutions for that for for uh, for instance uh, 
cooling this sort of effective temperature here like by running water injection to cool that down and have really good uh, data from uh, NACA papers on how many degrees we can lower the uh, exhaust valve seat, seat temperature for amount of uh, coolant used and what kind of the trade-off optimum there is and uh, all kinds of really good stuff but yeah of course with uh, modern modern uh, materials we can run much higher temperatures and as long as we have good cooling system we don't really need to care about that but what does that actually mean then for you like uh, running a car or or designing a cooling system uh, for your uh, race car so first of all if you're running uh, OEM uh, factory system and that it will typically mean it has a mechanical water pump or if not it will have a ECU that that already has the uh, the, the control for a uh, electric water pump figured out but for a mechanical water pump it's it will be dimension so you have enough cooling at for simplicity's sake let's say 800 rpm maybe in reality 1200 1500 something like that uh, so they will have enough mass flow at that rpm to uh, provide cooling for the hot spots on the engine because of course not all the not all areas in the engine will be equally hot if you have a higher so if we go back to this so if we have higher cooling flows or, or higher like uh, gas flow velocities for instance in the exhaust ports or something like that then the boundary layer will be thinner to the uh, uh, metal which means we need uh, more cooling or which means this temperature will be higher which means means this temperature here will be higher which means we will have a higher risk of, of running into these uh, vapor vapor issues and yeah so not all all sort of areas in the engine will be the same temperature or have the same sort of cooling requirements but the uh, yeah oem systems will have that figured out and they will have a water pump sort of dimension to provide enough flow even at low rpm and if you're then running the engine at say 8000 rpm and it has enough cooling already at 800 rpm then you basically have at least 10 times the the cooling power or it might even scale at the sort of uh, rpm to the second power or something like that depending on how it works depending on yeah how what the inlet to the water pump does and and if the use sort of blades might, might start cavitating at some point of pressure differences stuff like that and the inlet to the water pump might start cavitating also but but yeah sort of ballpark figures means that that for oem systems you will almost always have enough mass flow from the water pump and you don't really need to care about that uh, then there are lots of uh, race engine stuff where where the uh, race team is is building their whole cooling system themselves so then of course you don't want to run a, a thermostat of course because that's one extra component that you don't really want in the engine it takes up space you need to have like the uh, a bypass duct that takes up space also and is an extra component that you don't really need because it might uh yeah clamps for that might fail you might have leakages it weighs and all, all these downsides but so you see some teams uh like even really high 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 sort of level teams that are really used to running um mechanical sort of uh water pumps that have all of this figured out and you don't really need to care about that so they just basically want to run some kind of coolant temperature but just relying on an average coolant temperature doesn't really work uh, because if you don't have enough mass flow then your hot areas you will you will end up with these big vapor issues and you might even end up with if your engine cooling system is poorly designed you might even end, end up vapor locking the system which is then really really bad and you can potentially end up like destroying the complete engine because you go get so high high uh, temperature differences in, in the engine uh, all our engine uh, engines are designed to be self-bleeding so regardless of how much vapor is produced uh, they will uh, still still as soon as more more uh, coolant comes in uh, it will immediately fill up and and you won't have these uh, vapor locking issues but you of course still need to have enough coolant mass flow to uh, cool the hot spots so what do you do then if if you're designing your own cooling system with uh, electric water pump that you don't want to over dimension by 10 times that oem mechanical systems need to do uh, so you need to run the water pump at really high power as soon as you're you're producing any kind of engine power because that will typically be be correlated with uh, higher temperatures so higher combustion temperatures higher egts which then uh, heat the exhaust ports which are the sort of overall warmest things that you need cooled uh, so you need to have, have high mass flow to cool those so that means running the water pump at full power so that basically means that either you then need to to run a, a thermostat which you might not want to do 
but if you don't want to run a thermostat you then need to uh, block off the radiator uh, to to basically if you block off like, say half the radiator then half of the coolant going through the radiator is not going to get cooled at all and only half of it is going to get cooled so you can just block off more of the radiator uh, from the uh, airstream flow uh, to adjust your your uh, coolant temperature then and our engines for instance are absolutely fine as it doesn't matter what kind of temperature you run the coolant into the engine at, in as long as it has enough mass flow so high enough power in your water pump or in some cases you might even need to run like uh, two water pumps in series to get a high enough uh, pressure difference to get a high enough mass flow depending on what kind of uh, power levels you're running but yeah typically uh, our engine will be recommended to really high power settings you need to have a really high mass flow uh, through, through through the engines to be able to uh, cool them effectively but um yeah i think that is overall the sort of nutshell and uh, the short short version of uh yeah how cooling systems work how that relates to racing engines and sort of so some of the uh, caveats to uh, building a cooling system yourself and what you need to uh, think about so yeah hopefully this helps and uh, keeps you from uh, melting your engine components or uh, overheating uh, alloys and reducing their strengths or or yeah having other kinds of uh, issues with your engines but yeah feel free to contact us in case you have any questions but yeah until then see you next time bye